Today is unofficial Independence Day for so many. 155 years ago, Union soldiers landed on a Galveston, Texas beach, informing the last American slaves that they were free. The Emancipation Proclamation had been signed two years prior, but nobody told the slaves. Today, thousands are once again taking to the streets, marking that day, and continuing their demands for justice and equality. Today's marches have been peaceful, but in Tulsa, Oklahoma, residents are on edge. The president is set to hold his first rally in months there. And while some are anxiously awaiting his arrival, others are upset at the timing of the rally and the location. 99 years ago, Tulsa was home to the worst racial attack in American history. The massacre was so horrific, planes even dropped makeshift firebombs to help burn down the Greenwood neighborhood known as Black Wall Street. It's a moment erased from so many history books, but some families have never forgotten. And they say that they have continued to suffer repeated injustices. We're going to get to the president's rally and the concerns there in a moment, but Rachel Scott leads us off tonight with a family who knows the pain of that Tulsa massacre and the pain of police shootings all too well. In Tulsa, a day of celebration filled with grief, anger, and history. We talk about commemorating the Emancipation Proclamation when uh, we got word from Texas that the the slaves were free, but in reality, Rachel, we're still not free in 2020. We're still crying uh, for freedom. We're gonna channel a lot of anxiety, a lot of anger, a lot of fear, and hopefully allow people to express what we've been, been crying out for pretty much since 1921. For Tiffany Crutcher, that cry for justice took a personal turn in 2016 when her twin brother Terrence was shot and killed by Tulsa police. Somebody left their vehicle running in the middle of the street with the doors wide open. A police chopper flying overhead signaled he failed to comply with orders. Not for Taser, I think. That looks like a bad dude, too. Terrence was seen with his hands up, backing away slowly. Officers said he made a move for something inside his SUV. One fired a Taser, the other fired her gun. Shot fired! Terrence was unarmed. The officer, Betty Shelby, was charged with first degree manslaughter, but was later acquitted. The image that I can't get out of my mind is the images that I saw plastered on the front page uh, of the newspapers with Terrence lying on the ground with blood surrounding his head, surrounding his chest. That's the image that I see every single night when I go to bed. An image she now has witnessed again and again. When I watched the video of Ahmaud Aubrey and George Floyd. Uh, for the first time, I suffered a physical stress reaction and I couldn't sleep for days. I tossed and I turned and at that moment, moment I realized that, that, that we're in a state of emergency as it relates to being black in America. In her hometown in North Tulsa, a recent string of racial incidents prompting outrage, including this confrontation. Two white officers stopped two black teenagers for jaywalking. Hey, why are you, why are you arresting them? And a Tulsa police officer speaking as a private citizen who cited research which ABC News has not been able to verify, saying this in a radio interview. All of their research says we're shooting African Americans about 24% less than we probably ought to be based on the crimes being committed. The police department and mayor strongly pushing back against those comments and the matter is now under internal review. What does it mean to be black in America? What it means to be black in America means that, that you're criminal. I feel that being black in America is illegal. I feel like being black in America is scary. That strife is deeply rooted in Oklahoma and in Tiffany's family history too. Tracing back to 1921, the year of the Tulsa race massacre. My great grandmother grew up in the Greenwood district, uh, also known as Black Wall Street. She had a barbecue pit there. 99 years ago, white mobs laid waste to this area known as Black Wall Street, decimating a thriving community home to more than a thousand black residents and hundreds of black owned businesses. Most scholars who have studied this believe that 
somewhere between 100 and 300 people lost their lives. Property damage, conservatively estimated at the time, was $1.5 to $2 million. That's a low ball estimate, but if we translate that into to present value, it's, it's well above $25 million. We know that at least 1,250 homes were destroyed and a number of additional churches, schools, and businesses were destroyed as well. It is believed to be the single worst incident of racial violence in American history. Almost a century before Terrence was killed, his great-grandmother forced to flee for her life. We're suffering the, the residual effects of, of what happened uh, back in 1921. I always say that the same culture, the same policing culture, the same anti-black white supremacist culture that burned down my grandmother's community is the same culture uh, that killed Terrence. That same culture silencing survivors. The fear that they instilled in, in, in the community after the massacre was massive. They told them if they ever talked about what happened, that they would be killed, they would be hung. And so they were afraid, and, and that's a white supremacist tactic right there. And so they kept it suppressed for, for, for years. And it worked. They were afraid the same kind of inhumane, savage massacre would take place again. They were afraid. 85-year-old Bobby Eaton now working to tell those stories. You're still hurting, Bobby. I'm supposed to hurt for all of those people in massacre. But other descendants unaware of what happened in their own community. You've lived here all your life. How old were you when you learned about the race riots? I was 30 years old and uh, I was in Virginia visiting my wife's people and her uncle. He asked me where I was from. I told him Tulsa. He said, is that that place where they uh, burnt down the whole black community? I, was, I ain't never heard of it. And so he started telling me the story. And I was like, I've never heard about it. It was only this year that the state's lawmakers announced plans to include the Tulsa race massacre in all state school curriculums. Today, only a few visible reminders from that time remain notably the historic Vernon AME Church. People came back and worshiped here almost immediately after the massacre. The following Sunday, I mean, with ashes and everything all around, uh, we got some chairs from a local funeral home and one of our members owned the funeral home and we sat and we worshiped and we still have those chairs today. Um, and it is just a true testament of faith and resilience that I hope I never have to exhibit. I mean, the Edmund Church, we have a love feast, and a part of that love feast is to say that we are at love and peace with our neighbor. Now, can you imagine uttering those words after you saw complete devastation, saying that you were at love and peace with your neighbor? Dr. Robert Turner, the pastor there, showed us what's left. The railroad tracks that continue to divide the city and the original bricks that built Black Wall Street. Uh, and they see the charred parts of the bricks. Uh, and they tell a, a story of state-sponsored terrorism. Uh, these bricks saw the first time airplanes were used to drop bombs on American soil. These bricks hurt the screams, hurt the cries. And to this day, their blood still cries out, the blood of our ancestors. That cry haunting Greenwood nearly a century later difficult to break history up all those memories. On this Juneteenth, for Tiffany Crutcher, what began as a fight for her brother is now a fight for all black lives. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep chopping away at the tree. Every day I wake up, I pick up that axe and I chop away at racism. I chop away at bigotry. I chop away at, at, at hate. And, um, I just hope I'm making him proud by keeping up the fight. I just hope I'm making him proud. And Rachel Scott joins us live in that Greenwood neighborhood. Rachel, you use the word haunting, and that feels like such a perfect way to put it. How is that family moving forward, and how is that community moving forward? 
Yeah, well, Diane, today is a celebration. The words Black Lives Matter painted on this historic block. But, you know, so many in this community are still healing from the past of racial violence. So many are still learning about what happened right here on Black Wall Street 99 years ago in 1921. And there's a saying here in Tulsa that knowledge is power. Well, that 85-year-old man, Bobby, that I spoke with said he believes that the next generation is going to be armed with the knowledge that his generation did not have. He believes that they are going to be able to drive the change. But he also said that the president's visit and his rhetoric is not only a slap in the face, it's like ripping open a scab of a wound that is still trying to heal. And this community is bracing for what could be a very tense 24 hours. That and Rachel, I know the president is set to touch down there in about 24 hours. How is the community doing with that, with that ahead? Yeah, well, many here were outraged when the president announced his rally on Juneteenth, a day commemorating the day of slavery, but also during the year when this city is commemorating the 99th anniversary of the Tulsa race massacre. And again, so many here are still coping with what happened. You see the generational strongholds that have gripped this community for now decades. They want the president to not only understand what it means to have black lives Lives matter. They want him to understand the racial injustice, the race, the racist systems that this country was built upon, and they want change, Diane. And Rachel, as you're talking, we were looking at the live drone footage of that Black Lives Matter mural painted there on the street. The resounding message coming from these protests in general, but even more so today than any other. Rachel Scott there for us from the Greenwood section of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Rachel, what a moving report. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.